Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. Today's episode comes from a student question that really made me nostalgic. Here's an example of the problem she was facing. She had the boundary of a residential building site and needed to add the bearing and dimension labels to the plan. She did this by checking the properties for each line, starting the mtext command, and typing in the information manually. Oh, we gotta add the degree symbol as well. Fun, fun, fun. She rightfully said that this was a giant pain in the butt and asked if there was a better way. In regular AutoCAD, the answer is complicated. You could write a Lisp routine to gather the information and type it out for you. It wouldn't be super difficult, but it would take needing to learn how to program, which she didn't have time for. Would you be interested in seeing how to write that program as part of my AutoLisp series? Let me know in the comments. But she wasn't using regular AutoCAD, she was using Civil 3D, where the answer is literally the reason I learned Civil 3D in the first place. Early in my career, I would work random gigs that ranged all over the place. An electrical wiring diagram, a house, a fabrication job, and the occasional small subdivision. The exact problem, needing to label the lot lines in a 10-lot subdivision, absolutely drove me up the wall. While I've been talking, I've been drafting it in the background the manual way, and even played back at double speed is just so dull and rife with places to make dumb mistakes. So today we're going to take a look at labeling lot lines using two methods, line labels and parcel labels. We'll see the advantages of each and also talk about how to modify the style of labels as well. So let's get to it. I know some of you found this video at 5.45 p.m. and you want to finish working so you can get home. So let's jump right into the simple method, labeling a single line. We're going to want to make sure we're in the Civil 3D workspace and go over to the Annotate tab. In the Annotate tab, we click the Add Labels text, go down to Line and Curve, and select Add a Single Segment Line Curve Label. Then we click on a line. Done. Click on another line. Done. Click a curve. Also done. All Civil 3D labels are annotative, meaning they scale themselves based on your drawing settings. So if it's too small, you can simply change the scale in the status bar. Hooray! This is great. We need to label a line or two. But if you make your lot a polyline using the join command, we can do a different method. Again, go to the Add Labels text, go down to Line and Curve, and select Add Multiple Segment Line Curve Labels. Now, click on the polyline. Even more done. As long as you like the way it looks, hit Print and go home. You did good today. Oh, you don't, you don't like the way it looks? Then I guess we should talk about... If you've ever worked with Civil 3D, you know there are 987,000 different styles you can set up. All the styles are managed in the Toolspace palette in the Settings tab. You just have to find the right style in the right folder, which is fun. It's like a scavenger hunt you didn't sign up for and didn't really want to play. In this case, we're using the general label styles lines called Standard. We can edit this in at least three ways. One, we can find the standard style in the Toolspace palette, right-click, and choose Edit or Copy, depending on if you might want that old style somewhere else or not. I wouldn't use new at this point because making a label from scratch is a pain without some kind of reference to go by. You can also get here by clicking on a label, going up to the ribbon, and clicking the arrow next to Label Properties and selecting Edit Label Style. The icon to the right will let you choose to edit the existing one or copy it. Finally, if you select a label and then right-click, you can choose Edit Label Style, which gives you the same choices as the ribbon command. Either way you get there, I'm going to choose to copy the current selection just for the heck of it. First thing first, give the copy a new name. I'm going to call mine Linda because I've been listening to Wyclef Jean a lot lately and that song is stuck in my head. I recommend you name yours a little more descriptively. First, let's see how we can change the text style that the label uses. On the general tab, we can see a preview of the label and you'll find a section called Text Style. 
Click on the word standard. This reveals three dots that you can click on. Here you can select any text style that you have defined in your drawing, like this god-awful hand font. I loathe this one. Ugh. So I'm going to change it back, but you can see how to do it. Next, we're going to go to the Layout tab. On the top left, we can see a drop-down called Component Name, which we can click on to see the four individual parts of this label. In this case, we can see Table Tag, which we can safely ignore today, the Direction Arrow, the Bearing, and the Distance. In my case, I don't really want a direction arrow, so I'll choose that first. With that selected, I can click the red X, and there we go, it's gone. The distance component is the one I really want to change. With three decimal places, it's a little too precise for the kind of project I'm working on, and I want to change that. Find the contents section below, and click in the cell on the right. This will show three dots that you can then click on to open up the label component editor. If you double-click the text on the right-hand frame, the text will highlight in blue, and the left frame will update to show you all the options you can choose from. Here we're going to change the precision to only two decimal places. To apply the change, you need to click on the arrow in the top right, and then you can click OK. Finally, I'll look at the bearing component. I'm actually happy with this one, but if you wanted a different style, you could change it here. To do that again, you'd click on the content section and then click the three dots on the right, and follow the same steps as before. If you make a change and the preview doesn't update, try again and make sure to click the arrow to apply the changes you made. That's it. Well, almost. Since lots often have curves as well, we also want to check the curve label also. Now we test it out. And it didn't work. We haven't actually told Civil 3D to use our new label style yet, so let's do that. Going back to Add Labels, go down to Line and Curve, and this time select the top option, Add Line and Curve Labels. This command lets us select what style we want to use. The nice thing is, once we do this, it sets it for any future labels we want to add. So let's do multiple again, and voila. This method works just fine for the question my student asked. For any single lot or small subdivision, it works well. But while it was perfect for my older, smaller projects, it's not good enough for my current needs. I'm working on a project right now with over 570 lots, and aside from just labeling bearing and distance, I also need to add areas to all 570 of them. What I need are parcels. Parcels are smart objects in Civil 3D that automate a lot of the annoying things about subdividing lots. I'd love to make a video about all the great things that parcels can do. Leave a comment if you'd like to see that. But for now, let's just use them as super label tools for our single lot example. First, we need to convert our lot into a parcel. This is easy to do. In the Home tab, Go to the Parcel command and choose Create Parcels from Objects. You can select lines and arcs, but it is better to use a polyline just to avoid having to click a lot. Next, a dialog pops up to ask us what we want it to look like. We can cover sites in a later video, so for now we'll just accept the default. The parcel style mainly controls what layer the parcel is moved to, and if there's a fill turn on, I'm going to leave it at the default. The area label style is where some interesting things happen. If I edit the existing style, we can see that the standard style gives the parcel a unique number and the area in square feet. For this single lot, I don't need a parcel number, and I want my area in square feet and acres. So I'm going to copy the standard label and make that change. I'll name this one Square Feet and Acres, and go to the Layout tab. Here we only have one component, Area. Let's edit the contents of this label. Label components can actually have a bunch of stuff in them. This one has a Name section at the top that I'm going to double click on and delete, because I don't want it, and then delete the blank line that's left. Clicking on the part in angled brackets, I can see that the area is being displayed in square feet to two decimal places. I don't need that level of accuracy, so I'll change that and click the arrow to apply the changes. Then I can add more stuff. 
anything inside those angled brackets, I don't want to edit manually. I want to use the properties on the right instead. But outside of the angled brackets, I can do whatever I want. In this case, I want to add the text square feet. I'm going to hit enter to add a new line of text. And then I want Civil 3D to show the same area in acres. Back in the properties section, I want to make sure the top drop down still says parcel area. Set the unit to acres. And then click the arrow to push this in to my preview area. This adds a new set of brackets. And outside of that, I'll add the text acres. When I click OK, I can zoom into the preview area with my mouse wheel and I can see a problem. They, they all say zero acres. Oh, crap. Well, since an acre is 43,560 square feet, and I definitely didn't just Google that, it makes sense. Let's fix the issue. Going back to the contents editor, double-clicking the second parcel area code, the one where it's set to acres, we can see the problem. We're rounding all acres to the nearest whole number, which is not precise enough. Let's change it to two decimal places. Remembering to hit the arrow and clicking OK shows a much better preview. Finally, we're done and can click OK. Our new area style is selected, but the segment style sections are grayed out. To fix that, check the box below, automatically add segment labels, and now we can choose the segment labels we'd already created. Generally, I use Erase Existing Entities option to replace the lines or polylines we selected to start with with the new parcel, but you can do whatever you prefer. And there we go. All the boundaries are labeled and the parcel area is also labeled. Oh, and did I mention all these labels are live? Move the boundary and the labels also update. So that's nice too. Setting up Civil 3D labels can take some time, but once you've done them, using them will absolutely save you hours. All of this is covered in my Civil 3D classes. Whether you're a civil engineer or a surveyor, you can find the right class for you from the link in the description. Don't have time to set up your styles? Check out ATC's consulting services in the other link below. Did you find this helpful? Click the like button. Do you have a burning question of your own that you'd like to see a video about? Leave a comment. Finally, hit subscribe so I can make more videos. And for those of you that have subscribed, thanks a lot. And if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.